today on the TMZ Podcast. Hello and welcome to the TMZ Podcast. I'm Charlie Cotton and today I'm joined by my next door neighbour at the office. Deskmates, if you will. We're deskmates, Dennis Broad. How are you, Charlie? I'm doing very well. We've already talked about this earlier today, so I don't know why we're saying how are you again. Uh, you know, it's it's professional. It's courtesy. It's courtesy. Yes, we sit. We got our computers are next to each other. We always chat it up in the mornings. We do. You are our resident police expert, police contact. Yeah, I, I know a lot. You know a lot. You were a former police explorer, private investigator. Oh, you're a private program. investigator? Yeah, no lost profession. Way. Yeah, I have a weird background. I have no TV background. That's awesome. Now you're kind of an investigator for TMZ. Yeah, yeah. Same skills. Well, I want to talk to you about this escaped prisoner who was just captured. Um, it's a huge story. His name is Danilo Cavalante. Um, we're going to talk about how he survived on the lam for a couple of weeks. Fascinating story. It really is. We'll talk mm. about, well, it's kind of self-indulgent, but we're going to talk about my clip that I got at LAX. I, I, I kind of <laughs> like this clip. I kind of think it's a very fun story. Uh, I talked to Lisa Ling um, about the discovery of supposed alien corpses and, and what, would, what would it mean for society if we had like sort of irrefutable, verifiable evidence of aliens? Would it be good for us or bad for us? Or Pandemonium. Pandemonium. That's a little tease by Dennis. Yeah. You remember the movie, was it Men in Black? Yes. People are smart. Groups of people are not. <laughs> that, that was a documentary. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying. <laughs> um, this is a jam-packed show because we're going to talk about Bill Maher is bringing his show back. Um, the writers are not coming back, but the Bill Maher show is coming back. Already it's got controversy and I want to see what he's going to do. Already. He's so smart. But off the top, sync. Yes. The, the tease I, is getting teasier. I cannot wait. You're, we talked about this. I am ready. You're, you're a big NSYNC fan? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, as you know, there have been sort of... There have been posters up around town with QR codes leading you to a website, teasing the fact that NSYNC are potentially getting back together. Well, at least they're going to have a song on this new Trolls movie. Oh, are you kidding? At the MTV Awards, this is all people talked about, you know, and are they going to get back together? Are they going to be there? Are all of them going to be there? Is JT going to be there? So anything with them is just going to be huge. Well, I mean, they told us, and I don't know if I believe this, but they did tell us NSYNC they've got no plans for an album. They've got no plans for a tour, but I can sense that due to the <clears throat> excitement of the masses, we have changed our minds and we're coming back by popular demand. I hear something else. I hear cha-ching, cha-ching. Yes. That's what I hear. Well, they have just teased this new song now um, because the Trolls trailer has come out and the end of the trailer has this song, Better Days. How about we hear some of that trailer now? I wish you'd stop talking so we could get to it. <laughs> just let me take Is there more? <laughs> <laughs> Not yet, but it, I'm sure there will it be. It sounds just like NSYNC. There's no changes. There's no update to it. It sounds just like if you went on one of their old CDs, it doesn't just, it? It's only Justin Timberlake singing. So in that yeah, fact, yeah, yes, it does it, sound like just, NSYNC. I, it's, there's nothing fresh about it to me. Yeah, I mean... Clearly, we're not the biggest NSYNC fans in a worldwide no, audience. No, but, I mean, listen, I could get it. You know, I understand. If Garth Brooks came out with a new song, I'd be kind of like, I want to hear it. You're a Garth Brooks guy? I'm a, I'm a Jewish country guy. What can I say? Um, so they're going to, you know, appear in this Trolls Band Together movie that's coming out at the end of the month. Um, oh, the song is coming out at the end of the month, but the movie's coming out mid-next month. Um now, do you think it's going to be like the Swifties? Are they going to have to buy tickets just to see the end for this song? Uh, are NSYNC fans that rabid? They are pretty ridiculous. R are they? I mean, are the, ta the Taylor Swift fans well, are ridiculous. Oh, they're, but they're like ridiculous <clears throat> to a whole new level. Oh, no, but I mean, the NSYNC and the new kids on the block. I mean, those were back when I was young. I mean, those were in, and I still wasn't into that stuff. New kids on the block were like that, that big? They were that big. I uh. mean, they were in, to, but I mean, it's just like, I'm not going to see it. But, you know, but I can understand, like, that Swifty thing. It's the latest thing. It's, are you? There's are you, so much nostalgia right now. We're having so many reboots <clears throat> of shows and, like, sequels to movies that came out forever oh, God, ago. Yeah. And now NSYNC are getting back together. I could probably get a 30-minute movie, just maybe 45-minute documentary around this one song, and it will do great. It probably would. Hey, it if you're paying attention, I want credit for that, guys. <laughs> yeah. The NSYNC Nation. So, NSYNC, 
getting kind of back together, kind of not getting back together. Uh, I just think all of this is just leading down the road of a new tour, a new album. <clears throat> like, even though they say it's not going to happen, I'm not believing that, to be honest. I think that they'll come Look back. Look, you and I are talking about this, what, five minutes? And neither of us really are big NSYNC fans? Like, that's how big it is. And imagine what the rest of the world is thinking. True. You know, it's true. It's all we're talking about. True. Can't wait. Why do they have that asterisk at the start of their NSYNC? I never got that. Uh, Why is there an asterisk then it says NSYNC? Do you know the answer to that? Maybe because it's bad music? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Listen with caution. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Down the bottom it says listen with caution. I don't know. Okay. On to our next story. Bill Maher, his show Real Time with Bill Maher. It's the strike is over for that show, but not for the writers. No, you know, it's a very interesting, I, you know, you see what he says. He says, listen, I'm okay, but the bottom line people are not. They've gone mm. five months without a paycheck. And, and he said, listen, my show's going to suck. It's not going to be the same, you know, but I, I, I want to see it. I'm not re a regular Bill Maher watcher because mm. I don't watch him a lot of TV, but I want to see it now because I want to see what he's going to do. But yeah. I understand I understand his point because people are hurting and it's, you know, all the A-list people are not hurting, obviously. Yeah, it's like a second COVID for these writers. <laughs> yeah, it really is. And and all, I mean, all the writers, the actors, everyone who's on strike and all the people below production. Catering, I mean, you know, yeah. people who hold like the, the tape that puts the, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, no, yeah the drivers. Guys. I mean, the, the, yeah, you're right. Catering, food services. There's Everything. so many people that this is moving up. And, it, and I can see where it's frustrating because I've yet to see them go back to the table. I've yet to see them try to, you know, I don't know if they want to wait each other out. Who wants to break who? Well, exactly. Well, I mean, I think that, you know, Drew Barrymore came first. Bill Maher now also is coming back. Um, is this just going to be a wave, a trend of different shows coming back, you know, without <clears throat> writers? I don't, you know, I don't know. It's uh, it's interesting. I mean, I want to see the big ones. Is Jimmy Kimmel coming back? Or all those guys are doing podcasts now. Right. You know, I, I don't know. Does Drew Barrymore move the needle? Are you going out of your way to watch Drew? Me? No. No, me either. I mean, I don't know that she's, Drew's going to move the needle either way. But I mean, imagine if, and there's a possibility that these shows are nearly as good or just as good as they were before. And in that case... It could backfire on the writers. Why even bring them back? Yeah. Although, look, isn't the view... I believe the view is still going every day and they don't have their writers. Right. I mean... So, I mean, it can be done. Is it going to be... I mean, it'll be good for the first couple shows to watch. I might even tune into the Drew show just to see what it's about. But, you know... I just think this is a very dangerous time for writers. And, and, and the Writers Guild knows it because they're going to be protesting out of Drew Barrymore. They're going to be protesting outside uh, Bill Maher. So they don't like it. But these two, Bill Maher and Drew Barrymore, they are conforming to whatever the rules are. Like, we're not using the writers. We're not right. doing this. We're, we're like, you know, abiding by all the terms. But if these shows are as good, then you'll save a bunch of money by yeah. not bringing the writers back. And it might just start a trend. Now, next is Jimmy Kimmel. Next is Fallon. Interesting. I mean, are they going to do But You still need guests, right, to talk about things. And I and Bill Maher is, I don't know, does he always have A-list guests? And Drew, does she always have the big guests that are going to talk? Or yeah, but they can it... talk. They can talk, but they just can't. The rules are they can't talk about their projects. They can talk about, they can yeah, shoot the wants... shit about aliens if they want. Uh, who wants to see that in general? I want. If I do that, I'm going to listen to Howard Stern. That's a better interview. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's a better, I just... I don't know. I don't. I don't see what it's going to be. It's going to turn into a more Maury Povich or you know Jerry Springer esque thing. Very popular shows. Yeah, I mean maybe that's what maybe that's where we're going because those seem to be great. Do people watch like these talk shows for like the opening monologue that writers write, or do they watch it mainly for like because they like the host and they like the celebrity guests on shooting the shit? I mean, I would rather see like a guest. I mean, like when I listen to Howard, obviously I want to see who the guest is because I know it's going to be good and I know the project is the least part about what the 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 interview is going to be about. Right. You know, really good. I so I I think I'm. You're right. You might be onto something. It'll be interesting to see what happens there. Um, but yeah, they're going to be picketed. They're going to be. It's it's very contentious right now. I'm not sure. This has lasted five months. This strike. I don't know what's going to be like. What's going to break it? Um, I, yeah. How are you picketing when she says I'm going with the rules? By the way, I'm I'm abiding by the rules. Bill Maher said I'm abiding by the spirit of the yes. strike. So if I'm abiding, why are you picketing me? Right. Yeah, I mean, because it's against the, like the essence and the vibe. You know what I mean? It's I know, but so are these people that are not eating, and you know, these below again, these below the line people. So you know those signs they hold up with different messages on them, right? Who writes them? I thought you're not allowed to write, and now they're writing oh, the signs. Is that a, a little thing that, I just caught on a, to? That's a very Seinfeld esque thing. <laughs> uh, What's yeah. with these signs? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on to our next story. How did this captured fugitive, Danilo Cavalcante? How did he survive on the lamb for a couple of weeks? Uh, we have the answers. The answer is watermelon. 
watermelon and hiding your poop. I right. mean, it's it's fascinating. I, I, you know, he said he was going at nighttime, hiding under brush, and you know, they found him. I think it was a DEA helicopter. You know, with heat sensing and, and oh, is that how they? Found, I thought it was yeah, dogs. No, dogs. I think I think they found him, and dogs led him to the track. Uh huh. You know, it's it's very interesting. I mean, he broke into a house. He stole a gun. He stole a car. Yeah, he stole a car. He got a who knows? He's got a Philadelphia Eagle sweatshirt. Oh, does which he? is you know, listen, they have an interesting reputation. <laughs> I think they threw snowballs at Santa. So again, <laughs> as a fugitive, you know, not that surprising. Did you see his escape from prison the other day? Yeah, that crab walk was, I mean, that's parkour is, kids, parkour is going to teach you something. Really? You know, yeah. yeah. If, if you think you might get in trouble with the law sometime, learn parkour now because this guy scales out of the prison like nothing you've ever seen and no. suddenly he's gone. Yeah, I'm telling you, if I was MacGyver, I would make a new show, MacGyver Meets Parkour. Oh. oh, you know, we're on to something. I now. like that. So, I mean, he changed his appearance and he got away with it for a couple weeks. Just about two weeks. How come this whole time I slash a lot of people were kind of rooting for this guy? You know I what I mean? They, uh, yeah, because they made a guy who's escaped. But this is a guy, a two-time murderer. I think he killed his girlfriend in America and somebody, I believe, uh, where it was from Colombia or, or uh, uh, Brazil. Brazil. Sorry, Brazil. He killed somebody there. Yeah. I don't know. It's that, like, people love outlaws. There's always somebody that loves an outlaw. Yes. Always. I think it's like whatever movie we watch and we love sort of like escaping <clears throat> yeah. from the cops, um, the, the, the bad guy is always kind yeah. of a good guy. You know but what I mean? But in this case, it's not. Like, if it was a <laughs> bank robber, I'd be like, okay, that's a little, I could get behind a bank robber. That's a sexy right? crime. Yeah, exactly. But murder, I, I don't know. But it is fascinating how it just captured the media's attention. Right. I didn't even know what he, now I do know what he'd done. Yeah. And now I'm glad he was caught. But at the time, I was like, come on, Danny. Yeah, but I mean, but this is not the, I mean, this is not the only escapee. It's just when this one has been the biggest one that I've seen. Because he got away with it for so yeah. long. <clears throat> well, how long did El Chapo escape? How many prisons did he escape? And he was on the run multiple times. Were you rooting for him? No. But I'm just saying, it, it didn't get that same press. It's so interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. But it, I, because, I, because of your like, you know, past career you know, in law enforcement somewhat, uh, are you rooting for law enforcement? Mark? Always, yeah. I always rooting for law enforcement. <laughs> That's I, nice. You know, I didn't have a problem when they took a picture, like all those guys were around them. Oh, yeah. I, they they've did. been doing that since Midwest time, Billy the Kid, you know, or whoever they got. There's always pictures. You That's know? the home team for you. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna say, in, unless they're doing something wrong, you know, but... When uh, LAPD had a former cop, Dahmer, who was on this crazy man hunt, I don't remember if you remember that, and they ended up getting him, I think, in Big Bear, and oh, that was a crazy man hunt because he was going after cops. I was totally rooting for the cops, and it was almost cop on cop because he was oh, a right. former cop. Oh, who? Dahmer? Yeah, Dahmer. Oh, interesting. Yeah. But, man, there's nothing like a, a man hunt or a, or a car chase or just something like no. some someone versus the cops. It's I, always I mean, so we were we were almost ready to bring out Dog the Bounty Hunter. He was about oh, to get involved right. in this. That's right. I mean, the only thing missing was Tommy Lee Jones, you know, like, hey, I need a hard target search every outhouse, in-house. You know what I mean? <laughs> we were, that's the only thing that was missing. Okay, on to our final story. Oh, this is a good one. Uh, there's renewed interest in aliens. I mean, there's always been interest, but it seems like it's a big topic right now because of, you know, that Mexico hearing where they supposedly brought out the bodies of aliens. In the nice little coffin. Or, you know, <laughs> yeah. It was really nice. It was, it was a very respectful burial. Yeah, it was very nice. <laughs> um, so I got Lisa Ling yesterday at LAX, and she is an expert in people. She's got that show, This Is Life, with right. Lisa Ling. Um, so I talked to her about how would society, how would we as people react if there was verifiable evidence of aliens? And this is what she had to say. I wish I could say it would bring us together, but there are already species, living species, that inhabit the Earth with us that we have, for all practical purposes, uh, practically killed off. Uh, I suppose if that other uh, extraterrestrial force um, was violent <laughs> or threatening to us, I suppose that could uh, unite humans to want to ally, but very few things so far have <laughs> been true. able to do the trick. Yeah, I don't know if we'd ever come together Are over you, aliens. No, no. Are you kidding? You got one group that wants to meet him. You want one group that wants to big gain hunt him and put his head right next to my elk and my, <laughs> yeah. you know, my goat head that and my cool. stuffed bear. You oh, know, yeah. I mean, you you can't. We can't even get along on Ukraine. There's half the people. Oh, Russia's right. We're wrong. I mean, we can't even get along on that. Who are the people saying Russia's right? Oh, all these people get rid of. We don't want to send any money to Ukraine. Oh, okay, you know, okay. you know what I mean. Yeah, 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 you yeah. can find people on any side of the argument. Dude. We can't even, you know. We can't agree on anything. Because you think an alien? If, if no there, way. If there was 100% proof 
This is non-human. This is from out of this world. This is the DNA. Half the people wouldn't believe it still because it would like kind of ruin religion in a way because, you know, the Bible never talked about aliens. You know, we never, God created us in his image. So if there's aliens out there, it kind of dispels a lot of it. So, so anyone who like. I will say Scientology would get a, get, get a big push out of yes. this. If there was, I'm just saying, you know, that's they a thieson or... What's, what their, it, what's their thing? Theasons or I forget what it's called. They but, think yeah. we were here because of aliens? Yeah, here? you're definitely alien. Yeah. Oh, wow. Scientology would be like the Scientology new big thing. We're right. <laughs> yeah, we were right. We were trying to tell you guys all along. All the time. You were belittling us and we were L. right. L. Ron Hubbard was right. That would be kind of <laughs> hilarious. Um, so, I mean, NASA is actually releasing a report today that they've been doing this like investigation of all of these UFOs. They call them UAPs now. I don't know why, but they, they've changed what they call UFOs. They're going to release this report today, so everyone's on tenterhooks. Like, you what know, is it? In the last year, they've released stuff. TMZ has done a special on it. Yeah, I mean, and it's do we get tips every day? I saw something in the sky flying. You gotta, you gotta call me to see this. I mean, it, people are just obsessed with this. I won't believe it until there is like that clean shot. Why are they always blurry photos? It's, it's always it's like Bigfoot. You never get a clear shot no. or Loch Ness monster. It's always no. just yeah. We have good technology these days. Yes. Okay. Everyone's got a camera in their hand. Yeah, yeah. in the pocket. It, yeah, and it's not one of those old ones that, you know, you stand still for four minutes. Yeah. It's not one of those. <laughs> I know. So, I mean, I don't know if I believe that it's happened yet. Aliens have happened coming to Earth yet. It's interesting that Lisa said that, you know, it might, it wouldn't help us as humanity if we found aliens because I talked to Neil deGrasse Tyson the other day and he said it's the, it would be the greatest uniting force. So there's, these are two of again, America's again, favorite I, nerds. I, again, I think we're just the two sides. I think we got to side. We better kill them right away yeah. and study them, you know, or, you know, we should be friends and see what we can get. But no, they're not going to agree. Again, we can't agree on anything these days. So if aliens did come down here and they wanted like a... Who, who should be our celebrity ambassador? Dude, it's got to be Matthew McConaughey. Can oh, you, you had can, that ready to go. Can you imagine? Well, I've been thinking about this. <laughs> all right, all right. Welcome, guys. You got any of that Martian weed? Because you'd be a lot cooler if you did. Hey! <laughs> you know? I would just I would see him just being really cool. Driving up in a Lincoln with yeah, his, exa- like, his exa- hand out exa- the window. Exactly. You know, you'd say, hey, man, let's go to the bluffs over there in my house, you know? <laughs> Hang out with the wife and kids. He would be a good ambassador, actually. He would, because he's not very threatening at all. He's kind of like... I kind of want to hang out with this guy. All you right, know? all right, all right. See what I mean? How can you not, how can you be mad at a guy like that? I like that answer, Dennis. Thank you very much for joining me, mate. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. I'll see you back over at our desk in About two seconds. 12 seconds, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so see you there, Dennis. And we'll speak to you guys tomorrow. Thank you very much for joining us. Bye. Bye.